everyone, my name is Melanie Archibald and I am the beekeeper in the family at Archibald Orchards. Fred and Sandy are my aunt and uncle. So here we are in one of my bee yards or apiary. It's a bit too chilly today to work the bees with you. The bees don't really like to be opened if uh, it's less than 10 degrees despite the sun. So instead, we're going to honor your pollinator week by answering some questions that have been submitted from people all over Ontario. This one's from Juliana, age nine. When you put the bees in the drawer, do they make their own hive or do they just make honey? Good question. So the drawers are actually called supers. And in the super, the bottom boxes that you see there, the queen is, has a brood chamber nest. So what that means is that she's laying eggs constantly. That's sort of where the family part of the hive is. And then in the top box, a honey super, that's where they produce their honey. So they actually keep a colony going and produce honey at the same time. This one's from Vince, age nine. Why are bees black and yellow? So Vince, most bees are bl black and yellow, especially when you think of bumblebees, but actually just like people, bees come in all sorts of different colors. So there's 20,000 different bees in the world and they're all kind of a little bit different. The bees that I have in this colony tend to be a little bit more of a golden color. Um, the bees that I use in this yard are Carniolans and Italians. Okay. Johnny. Age, five, or age eight, why do bees make honey? So bees make honey because that's how they make their food. But the main reason that they stock and supply honey is because what they eat, flowers, does not, are not around in the winter. So what they do is they fill the stores with honey so that they can make it through the winter. Think of it kind of like how you have a pantry where you keep food. Good questions. This is Rebecca, age 29. I have heard about the healing properties of honey. Can you tell me a bit about that? For sure, Rebecca. So for years and years, people have been using honeys in medicine. So think about when you have a cold and you take honey that soothes your throat. Um, it's full of enzymes that are very good for you, but also honey also has hydrogen peroxide that comes naturally in it. So it's used a lot for wound care. Manuka honey in particular, which is from New Zealand, is very thick and it's been used a lot in burn remedies. So um, when horses get burns, they'll often smear them with manuka honey and it's a great healing agent for cuts and sores. I have burnt myself in the bee yard here once with a smoker when I wasn't wearing proper protective gear and I broke into honeycomb right away and smeared it on my burn and it healed within days, which is very unusual for burns. So there's lots of stuff you can do with honey. It's good for you. Good questions. Leila, age seven. How do bees make honey? So bees make honey by flying out and going into flowers and from the flowers they get nectar. So nectar is where honey starts. Then they fly back to the colony and they pass off the honey that they keep in a separate stomach from their own stomach. It's called a honey stomach and they pass on the nectar to the other bees, the worker bees or house bees in that colony. Those bees then put it layer by layer into the cells of the honeycomb and then they fan it. And what the fanning does is it takes all the moisture out of the honey and it ripens the honey. And then when the bees think that it's ready, they cap it. And so when you bite into honeycomb, that's the freshest you'll ever eat honey in your life. So the last time it touched air was when the bees thought it were perfect and then they capped it. So it's a really fun thing to do if you ever get a chance to bite into some honeycomb and then you can chew the wax like a gum for a bit as well. This one's from Grace, age five. Why do bees sting people? Good question. For example, my filmographer got a sting today when we were out here. <laughs> And that is because it's their defense me mechanism. So if they feel like their house is being threatened, that's why they sting. So honeybees in particular will almost never sting unless you're disrupting their house or unless you step on them. Another fact too is why <clears throat> people get scared of bees is they think that they're wasps. Wasps can sting multiple times because they have a straight s stinger. Whereas honeybees have a barbed stinger. So when they sting you, they actually leave part of their guts and their stinger in you. So they actually die after they sting. So it's not in their best interest to sting. But generally speaking, if you're giving them a safe distance, bees won't bother you at all. Last question. Rosie, age seven. How do you know a queen when you see it? So I wish I could have pulled out a frame for you today to show you. So queens have a very long abdomen. Insects are made up of three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. And her abdomen is very long and narrow and that's for her to fit her bottom end into the cells to lay eggs because the queen is the only fertile um, 
PD in that colony. So she's the mother of everyone who lives in there. And also she needs all of that space in her abdomen to be able to fill all or to hold all of the eggs that she has. Well, thanks for your questions, guys. Enjoy Eastwood Apiaries. Thanks for joining me and I hope you have a great pollinator week. Take care.